Hey everybody, Radaman here with episode 5 of Oxygen Not Included. The scenario settings, rules, and goals right here for your reminder. So picking up where we left off, I wanted to make a few changes to this reservoir system, but only after we start to run another batch through it, uh, because we are about to have our plumbing backed up, which is going to be very, very bad. It causes a, a lot of potty accidents for lack of a better term. Um, I wanted to go over some tips. So one is that I want to work on making uh, these valves liquid shutoffs to be automatic so that we don't have a duplicate run through the briny water every time. Um, that would be useful. Another thing is I'm going to change the priority of my storages to four so that uh, we don't prioritize them. Uh, in terms of the seed of this map, we have a, an extraordinarily low amount of copper. We do have some copper. I'm not going to say we have none, but this is a pretty low amount of copper, uh, compared to other map seeds. So I have to be very cognizant of that. So this is almost vacuum, and as soon as this is vacuum, we will dig up some bleach stone and use it in the filtration of this water. This water is, of course, very, very, very germy water that in no way belongs in our uh, in our aquifers. But really soon this will be all vacuum sealed, and then we'll introduce uh, chlorine into the... Oh, it is... Nope, there's still a little bit of micro vacuum, or micro oxygen. Not too, too much, though. Let's see, is it true vacuum now? I do believe it is. So let's turn this off. And then dig up some bleach stone. Some bleach stone that's not going to... Um, release this dense thick chlorine into the base i don't want that um not yet at least but taking a look it's also a pretty good path to explore um that has not gone unnoticed by me let's dig up that bleach stone and put store the bleach stone into this storage bin here which will make sure that it stays airtight. And I really want to run this through, so let's make it a high priority. Or higher. So now that these airflow tiles are constructed, I'm going to deconstruct the non-airflow tiles, and this will allow for the pooled carbon dioxide to release. And then let's also create a alternative path for, path for plumbing. And disable this pump so that we can remove the plumbing as well. So eventually the the water will dry up and then we'll be able to remove this corner of plumbing. So this is going to allow, yeah, as you can see, it's already working. The oxygen that has been bottled up, or carbon dioxide and polluted oxygen, stuff like that bottled up here is going to be able to flow through and down eventually to our carbon skimmer. And our carbon skimmer has almost entirely uh, filtered out uh, all the polluted stuff. I'm going to set up some deodorizers around here to pretend, to start to convert this polluted oxygen to regular oxygen. Um, so that in the case that a slime lung is released, uh, this doesn't get beat. slime lung pollution. Alright, so we mined up our... Right, let me pause for a second. We mined up all of the bleach stone. I'm going to set this storage bin to 7, 
And then, as an emergency, because I really don't want chlorine in my base, I'm going to set cleaning up that uh, bleach stone to a priority, a high priority, a priority seven. Nine, rather. Uh, but it's downtime. So, unfortunately, I don't think they got it done. Oh, no, they, they got some of it. Oh, no, not yet. They stopped what they're doing. Where'd you put it? Oh, here it is. A little bit of chlorine is not going to be a big problem, but a lot of chlorine as it builds up would become a problem. Because every, you know, while we wait, this bleach stone is outgassing a little bit of chlorine, and uh, what ends up happening is eventually the bleach stone dissipates. It, it outgasses everything, and then we have no chlorine left. It's kind of worst case scenario. But Dennis, Keith, and one who is many, when they're up, will uh, fix that. Okay, so here they go. No, they're not. Uh, let's. So if you really want something done immediately, what you could do is set it to emergency. And then everyone stops what they're doing and will run that task. This, I wouldn't say is necessarily an emergency, but I really do want it done now. So, I'm, uh, I queued it up as such. So now we've delivered the bleach stone. And... Actually, I'll build the cables from the inside. So, so as a result, as you can see, the germs in this water, because the atmosphere is chlorinated, is dropping like crazy. Now, set that back to 7, the alarm goes away. And then once the germs hit 0, we have to wait a little bit because the germs in the pipes, or the germs rather in transit, don't necessarily get cleaned. They need to be in the reservoir and not, you know, in a intake or outtake valve. Um, <clears throat> but when this hits 0, we'll be able to flip this liquid valve uh, and and introduce this fresh, filtered, and purified water back into our aquifer. Now this pipe here is probably empty. It is. So let's get that destroyed. This is going to be a high priority so that we can get our water running again. And now it's flowing properly. Let's turn the water back on. Alright, so here as you can see... The germs are all cleared out, so what we'll do is we will turn this flow control on to allow this water to re-enter our aquifers. And once it's emptied out, we can then turn it off and turn this one back on. We have to just flop it. Uh, another thing I want to do is a storage bin here of just like rotted stuff that we don't necessarily want to keep near anything else. Keeping it in carbon dioxide would be ideal, but I don't have a dedicated carbon dioxide uh, area. So polluted dirt and rot piles will go here. Whereas it's not, polluted dirt and rot piles aren't allowed anywhere else. And that way we have somewhere to put it. Polluted dirt just waiting to be composted. Uh, so that's sort of the cue. So, the water that we had very, we had filtered carefully, is now being dumped back into my aquifer, uh, purified entirely. I 
that's it. It is all outflowed. So I'm going to turn off that flow control. And I will um, turn these over to liquid shutoffs so that they are automated soon. So I'm looking for ways to explore beyond our starting biome, but without hitting too much slime, because I just don't yet want to deal with the slime. All right, so now that shutoff's off, and this one will be turned on. As you can see, the output pipe is full for the, um, here, I'm gonna make this an emergency. The output pipe is full because we don't have any more room. So it is, it is in fact, an emergency to get this done so that we can use the bathrooms because uh, otherwise we'll have potty accidents. Okay, now that we've taken all of the sewer water, I'm going to disable the water sieve so that I can replace this liquid valve up here with a shutoff. Deconstruct. And for us to have a shutoff valve, I will need to start to process copper into copper ore. So what this is gonna look like is, yeah, I don't have the refined metal yet, but I'm going to need to run uh, power. Now, as you can see, I'm not running Actually, you could run it like this. I'm not running power um, off of this switch because this switch is dedicated for this uh, gas pump. Honestly, this gas pump probably won't be used in the way it's set up anymore. If anything, it's going to be used for our ore scrubbers. But we'll, we'll see about that. So our rock crusher has not yet crushed enough refined. And I believe our research is done. So the next thing I'm gonna want to do is to research to ore scrubbing. Ore scrubbing is um, the way a sink works for germs. An ore scrubber works for um, not duplicates. Basically, let's say we set up an ore scrubber here and then everything beyond the ore scrubber, like let's say slime, when it's mined up and brought back into the base, we scrub it to make sure it doesn't have any germs. Very, very, very important. All right, so the liquid shutoff is all set. Uh, we are going to need to power it. And then we are also going to need to automate it. Now, eventually what's gonna happen is we will have um, we'll have a germ sensor to automate a lot of this. But until we have that germ sensor to automate it, uh, we're gonna need to automate it with just uh, automation switches, which is fine. Let's mine up some, or refine some additional copper to copper, or copper ore to copper. All right, so taking a look, as you can see, all of this is now breathable, fresh oxygen because of these uh, deodorizers. Uh, there's obviously a pool of it over here. Um, and I'm going to make a little bit of effort to deodorize this pool of polluted oxygen. Polluted oxygen is, is, in my mind, sort of a ticking time bomb waiting for a disease outbreak. Which is not something I like to sit on. Alright, so now that we have this liquid shutoff, we're going to be able to automate whether or not these valves are open without a duplicate running there, because I can hit switches remotely blueprint bristle berries a farmer decorator uh all right bristle berries it is i didn't like the other dupes i'm very picky about my dupes 
let's continue this path into the abyssalite. Abyssalite is a, um, a very dense material, um, but we do have the skills to break through it. As we can see, one who is many is maxed out in mining, so can mine through literally anything. Other things I want to do, uh, let's introduce airflow tiles into the floors of some of our buildings. And then mine out uh, a path for that air to not be trapped. Alright, so now, if you take a look at the liquid shutoff, I can flip a switch and introduce more water into the system. I can also, uh, let's go ahead and flip this pump switch because this is starting to fill up as well. And we'll have a big batch of uh, fil filtered water. Now the clean water that's entering the sieve gets sieved all, all the same. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if it's clean or uh, polluted. It does matter, however, if it's, you know, salinated, if it's brine or something like that, it that's a little bit different. Oh, we've got hatches that are spreading. We've got new hatchlings. Uh, how's this path? Okay, so this looks like a saltwater biome. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then we are also going to be able to dig uh, this way. Avoiding the slime and chlorine. This is uh, iron ore, which could be useful. We'll grab some of it while we're here. And just keep going. And this looks like a frozen biome. Uh, yeah, I already searched those. Oh, but it looks like there's a security door over here. So we have some mining exploration going on. All right, so here we are. As you can see, we are now filtering this uh, this oxygen so it becomes fresh oxygen. This pump is fully done. I'm not going to introduce any more water to this system here. Now, as you can see, some of the water is being stored inside this liquid shutoff. This is an instance where the water stored inside the liquid shutoff wouldn't be filtered, which is why we need this loop. All right, liquid base refinement is done, which gives us ore scrubbing, which is very, very good. Uh, all this water is purified, so let's go open this flow control, and then we're going to break it down and replace it with a liquid shutoff, which I do believe I have enough, yes, I have enough uh, refined copper to do that. Research currently is done. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I need any additional research. I guess I'll start the prerequisites for plastics. Now, there's an alternative way to get plastics, which is to have ranching and evolve drecklets into glossy drecklets. So when you ranch animals, there's a small chance that eggs that they lay will have different properties than their parents. Um, not that there's technically parents or whatever, but um, in that way, what you could do is you can have a, a farm of regular drecklets, and then if they lay a glossy egg, once that glossy egg incubates and hatches, it will be a glossy drecklet, which you can shear for plastic, whereas a drecklet shears for uh, reeds, reed fibers. Um, so there's... And this is true of a lot of different resources. There's multiple ways to get, you know, certain resources. Uh, whether it be shearing treklets for plastics or refining oil for plastics. Um, treklets, you're probably not going to be able to shear in bulk, in large bulk. Like, it's 
Directlet shearing is great early on when you need a little bit of plastic, but when you need tons of it, that's when branching kind of falls apart. Unless you have a massively large scale ranching project, which, yeah, you might have. So down here we have the ice biome. What's unique and interesting about the ice biome is the ice biome has plants called weaswarts. These weaswarts generate cold. So I'm going to create a ladder straight down into this ice biome like this. Um, and the advantage of the weaswarts, the, they can't be farmed. Unlike a bristleberry, for instance, when the bristleberry matures and we harvest it, we can get additional bristleberries off of it at a low percentage, but we can. Uh, weaswarts never are farmed like that. So essentially, there is a finite amount of weaswarts on the entire map, and you never get more than what you start with unless you printer pod them. Uh, I don't, I can't think of another way to get a weaswart. Um, so it's a finite resource, but it's a very handy resource early on because early on you're going to have buildups of, um, you're going to have buildups of, uh, heat and it's a really good early way to dissipate heat. So this is the security door. I'm going to submit a bioscan to open it up. And in here, as you can see, we have pinch of pepper plants, a vending machine, which we can rummage around, but, um, for some nutrient bars, but no, there's really nothing special in there, unfortunately. But finding it, finding a coal biome is pretty good. We did just get an achievement for uh, going where we went. Ghost of Gravitas, getting a database entry from a facility ruin. And there's going to be a bunch of ruins here. That I'm sure in due time we will find. Alright, so now that that's all dumped out, let's do liquid shutoffs. Up there. Because eventually the sewer water will back up and become a problem yet again. We don't want that. Uh, in fact, I would say it is a high priority that we get that done so we don't have a backup. Another thing I want to do is to grab the Weezworts and exploit them for their, um, their properties. Okay, so we just researched ore refining, natural gas and petroleum generators, All right, plumbing, liquid shutoff, put it here as a priority nine, and then we're also going to want to plug it in. And we are also going to want to automate it. Actually, I, I shouldn't put that there. And all this is uh, high, high, high priority construction projects. Just so that we don't have a backup. Alright, so here's another saltwater biome. Which... Uh, grows waterweed, which is like a lettuce. Most of the other biomes have plants that are pretty useful in growing. It's just complicated. So, for instance, pinch of, pe pinch of pepper plants is really good for cooking, but of course it grows in chlorine. Or you've got um, thimble reeds, which grows in polluted water. A little bit easier to deal with than, uh, you know, chlorine. Or you've got uh, the waterweed, which requires salt water. Um, you've got mushrooms, which require CO2. I don't know if I found a mushroom yet. But yeah, there's mushrooms as well that require CO2. Oh, a buddy, a buddy bud. So yeah, there's a whole variety of different, uh, different, you know, farming and ranching that you could do. All with its own benefits. Uh, which I'll, I'll only really cover once we get there. So here's the ladder that we want to build. I hope Igneous Rock... You know what? Forget the Igneous Rock. What do we have around us? Oh, we have Igneous Rock. Okay. Often it's probably... Often it's best to construct ladders with the materials that could be sourced nearby. Uh, Igneous is kind of a nice um, resource to have because it's a good insulator. 
So it's, it would not be ideal to waste it on a ladder, but... You generally don't run out of rocks. This game gives you plenty of rocks. Alright, so now that I have an automation wire, shut off, disable by auto... Okay, good. We're able to filter again. And now everything is... Um, Everything is controlled by automation, so it doesn't require a duplicate to go into the chlorine pool. So we're not going to have a sewer backup problem. Now what we will have, eventually, is a issue where we run out of this fresh water, because it is being used up, believe it or not, primarily in research. We are using a ton of water in research, uh, but we're also using it, um, you know, for the water coolers and things like that that we just don't necessarily get back the same amount that we put in. I don't know if that's entirely true with the water cooler. Oh, here's another ice biome. Um, but yeah, you, you can run yourself out of water. Uh, so you got to be cognizant of your water usage. New printables, shovelful eggs, cooking and farming. Who's a pacifist? That is a... Let me close that a second. It's copious free time. You like cooking. Nobody right now is a farmer. So no, I would say I need a rancher more than a farmer. The advantage of a farmer is that when you have a farmer and you have a farming station, a farm station, you can fertilize the plants that are in your farm with fertilizer to make them grow faster. Um, I don't have a food shortage, so I don't really need to do that. Uh, which means a farmer is not as useful to me as a rancher would be. And these other guys are, uh, less supplying, digging, tidying. I already have that. And decorating and operating, I have that. So, shovel vol eggs, uh, but I don't want shovel voles, so I'm just going to... Turn them into omelets. I am indeed leaving the hatches alive, though, as I'm sure you've noticed. The reason I'm leaving the hatches alive is this map doesn't have a lot of coal. I don't... I really don't have a lot of coal here. And as a result of having a, a definitive lack of coal, uh, I'm going to want to keep hatchlings alive or ha hatches alive so that they can um, consume... minerals for me and poop out coal. They generate coal. And that's going to be uh, pretty handy. They excrete solid coal and they eat just about whatever you want to feed them. Obviously I can decide what I want to feed them more easily once I have a... Uh, once I have uh, a rancher. You know, I can pick what I feed them. But for now, I, I don't get to pick. I'm trying to think. It, let's take a quick look at the research tree. I don't necessarily need to keep queuing up additional resource research because I'm not really using a lot of the stuff I'm queuing up. Um, HVSC would be handy for gas reservoirs if I want to store gases in large quantities. But And then some of the decoration tree, but my current... Um, Decorator is not high skilled, so it's not that important. What's going to be important is to get to this um, polluted biome, this uh, polluted biome, this uh, ice biome, and utilize the wheeze warts. So this is sort of the, my personal priority here: is exploration for resource, um, which is the same reason why I'm digging this way as well. Yeah, as you can see, glossy directlets is a 2% chance. Uh, stone and sage is 2% as well. You can evolve like a, a Pokemon, I guess. Unfortunately, there's really not a good way for me to dig upwards without having to deal with maybe going this way, but without having to, me to deal with uh, slime. So the way the slime would work, if, if you want to go through slime, you set up an ore scrubber. And an ore scrubber, like I said, is just like a sink. 
Um, the ore scrubbers have to have chlorine gas piped to it, which at the moment I don't actually have a lot of chlorine gas, as you could tell. I just have like barely enough grams of chlorine gas to keep my water uh, fil filtering. But then you pipe the chlorine gas, and then once um, when a duplicate holding resources passes by it, they will clean those resources of um, of the germs on the tile, uh, and it won't infect the rest of your base. Which... So for instance, this sandstone here is uh, quite germy. As you can see. Uh, so I'm actually going to change this insulated tile queue to be like that. I don't want to destroy this sandstone and and introduce uh, slime lung into one of my uh, stockpiles. So for right now, uh, the priority is exploration. Just trying to get to new horizons safely. Now as we go into the ice biome, most of it is carbon dioxide, so it's going to be tough to breathe. As you can see, I think one who is many is already holding the breath, uh, because this is very high carbon dioxide. Um, this is a need for a, a exosuit forge and atmo docks. So what you can do, I don't have the, well, I don't have the refined metal. Which I can get the refined metal. That's not my bottleneck. My bottleneck is I don't have the, um, the reed fibers, these reed fibers to help weave into clothing. Um, I could get some of those reed fibers by uh, going into, you know, areas like these and getting the thimble reeds. I could also start harvesting thimble reeds. So that wouldn't be a terrible idea either. But um, I'm going to need to do something like that before I'm able to utilize exosuits. But exosuits are, yeah, you can think of them as like rudimentary spacesuits or like diving suits. They are internally contained with an oxygen source um, and they protect you from anything, you know, some temperature, a little bit of temperature variance. You can't, like, dive into a volcano with an exosuit, but they protect you from some temperature and then, and then hot, you know, gases and stuff like that because, obviously, you're breathing the oxygen that is in the suit. Um, and that's a very good thing to set up when you're going into slime or when you're going into, you know, something where you wouldn't be able to breathe. Like, down here, as you can see, this is all hydrogen um, with a saltwater geyser. And I'd love to be able to figure out what kind of geysers I have around here. But the simple fact of the matter is, until I have a, a functional way to deal with all the slime that I have, I don't really want to go into uh, into the slime biome. I will build a way for me to get into the slide, slime biome soon, though. Uh, so the other research I said that I wanted was art research. Art research is going to be... I don't need a beach chair. But art research is going to help me keep my duplicates happy. Um... Once I have a capable artist, which at present I don't exactly have, but I will have eventually. Also taking a look, looks like my, um, <clears throat> my water amount is kind of dwindling. Um, so a project to fix that would not be a terrible idea. But I'd probably redesign it a little bit if I was to aim to fix it anyway.
So our ladder is almost low enough to start to uh, dig around and get these wheeze warts. So another thing I could do is in the planter box, what I could do is set up planter boxes for heat hot spots that I have around my base. So um, one of the hot spots would be like around here where I've got this cool steam vent putting out BTUs of heat even through my insulated walls. And uh, we've got one, two, three wheeze warts here. Easily uh, exploitable. And then I suspect we're going to have some additional wheeze warts in this cold biome. It's rare to have a cold biome without wheeze warts. Alright, so we're processing some copper ores. Uh, and this is to allow us to build things with refined metals. Man, my research is really going through my fresh water pretty quickly. Ew, you were gross. Copious free time went into the, uh, <laughs> into the polluted water. Most of this is, um, there's a little bit of polluted oxygen here and there, but most of it is pure oxygen um, because of our filtration efforts. Okay, so we're almost at the weasel wart. And then, of course, being in the cold biome for a long time without clothing to protect us from the cold will also cause us to get hypothermic. Uh, another thing is the ices. Uh, I need to make sure, well, first off, that my storage here is full. I guess I can allow rust. That's not kind of a problem. Um, but liquefiable. That's another, um, that's something that I have to be careful about where I put and what I do with it. So what I'm going to do is actually put a spot for liquefiable uh, in this pump here. Next to the pump, I'll put a uh, a uh, storage bin here for any liquefiables that I have. Oh, I have my construction priorities as default 9, which is totally not what I meant to do. That's fine. And then the Weezwort I grabbed. Let's plant one here. And... I'm going to plant one here. I'm really concerned about the heat that this cool steam vent, which is in no way cool, is putting off. Uh, so it's going to be really important for me to deal with the potential heat buildup that that, that, that generates. And building some sort of insulated tile wall like this is... Uh, it's a stopgap measure. I, I, I don't... I don't uh, disagree with that, but it's one that's going to be okay for us for now. Oh. Alright, so we've got some wheeze warts already, and we'll plant them soon. And some new printables. Pufflet eggs. No ranchers. Unfortunately, ranching is probably the only thing I'm, at the moment, going to allow. So, pufflets, if you're curious, uh, excrete lumps of slime with each breath. Um, again, I don't really have any capacity to deal with uh, slime buildup, or storing slime, or anything involving slime, so I am not considering to use to, to, to do anything with these pufflets. I'll just kill them off. Alright, so another wheeze wart. And then what, these wheeze warts also need phosphorite as a fertilization. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't generally go the route of drecklet farming is drecklets um, 
eat, like, you know, they, they do excrete phosphorite, uh, but not in, yeah. It, it, phosphorite can be a little difficult to obtain. I don't know. I, I'll probably end up farming some Drecklets, but not, like, mass production of Drecklets or anything like that. Another thing that is going to happen now that we're in the cold biome is we are going to get a lot of uh, sleet wheat. Sleet wheat is a material that you get from these wild growing sleet wheat plants, which allow you to uh, cook it. The downside, of course, for cooking frost buns is you have to travel a lot to get the uh, sleet wheat, which can be, you know, a lot of travel time for something to cook. So they do provide like an incredible source of um, food, but at the cost of a lot of travel. So see, here, if you check the temperature, uh, as you can see, it is slowly getting cooler around this area um, because of those wheeze warts. And um, I'm going to put my wheeze warts on task here to try to uh, keep that, you know, cooling, cooling down. Oh, I ran out of copper. So now I'm um, designing a sort of the future walls of my permanent aquifer with airflow tiles so that we don't trap any uh, gases in my aquifer. Uh, we are going to get this wheeze wart soon. Let me just prioritize this as seven. Fine art is done. Once I slow down on the research, my water levels will sort of normalize. Duplicate skills, sign curve. You will go with astronomy and take the astronomy cap. So it's about 38C here as reference. Um, <clears throat> also, this water sieve puts out heat. Really, almost everything puts out heat. The research benches, the everything in, involving power. Most things produce heat. Very, very few things produce cold. It's one of the, um, one of the difficulties of oxygen not included is you, things get hot easy. Things do not get cold easy. Uh, seems like Simple, simple, like, to understand, but it's very hard to, to, to deal with the build, the constant buildup of, of, of heat, unless you're very careful about how you plan. And I am not known to be all that careful. Another thing I notice is my coal storage is going down. Um, and I really don't see a whole lot of coal. There's a little bit of coal here, uh, but there's not a whole lot of coal, uh, anywhere in this map tile. This is a very difficult seed. Um, there's some coal here, but it's all, you know, this coal I might be able to get to, but it's, a lot of it's locked up either in chlorine or in slime. Yeah, this, this seed is remarkably difficult. I'm actually pretty surprised. But here's the wall of my aquifer. And we'll create a ladder on the other side. <clears throat> I'm getting a little uh, hypothermic being in this water because this water is not exactly warm. And we're almost done with the art decoration queue. Uh, the liquefiables, wow, that's not done either. Yeah, I've, I've set up a lot of projects, but all of these long commute um, construction projects that doesn't have a local source of oxygen take a very, very, very long time to do because they just, they build like one or two ladders and then they have to go back for air. Um, I could put in a, a, a skimmer here. Uh, one of the dangers of putting in a, a carbon skimmer is 
is we still have to replace the carbon dioxide with something. And then the process of carbon skimming will consume fresh water, which we don't have an infinite amount of. Oh, that was not good. Should have uh, built the airflow tiles first. But oh well. We'll have some water trapped on the other side, and then we'll have to mop it up and fix that after the fact. So I'm planning on doing is dropping a ladder down into these aquifers here and pumping this aquifer, because these are both fresh, straight into this one uh, to resupply some of the water that we are missing. But then I can also start to tap into the polluted waters uh, in the slime biomes, because as annoying as the slime is, they do have tons of polluted water and then running it through the water sieve to filter it uh, once it's clean. Well, guys, that is all the time I have for this episode. If you have any feedback from me, do drop me a line in the comments below. I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all next episode. Farewell, everybody. Farewell, my friendly duplicants. <laughs>